Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we're gonna take a close look on the Runcom HD3 camera and I've also got this TPU mount and screen protectors and stickers so we're gonna see how, how they fit the camera. So let's start by unboxing the camera and see everything we've got inside. First of all, as you can see, we got the camera. It's a very beautiful camera and the design is very clever. So this is the first thing you notice when you see the camera. I also love this orange color. We got also this box with all the accessories. So let's look, look, see what we have inside. First of all, this micro USB cable that you can use in order to use it for FPV and to charge the camera. We got four Velcros here, which are useful to mount the camera to the quadcopter double coated stickers and a micro USB cable which enables us to transfer videos and photos from the camera to the computer and also to charge the camera. In addition we've got the user manual that tells us everything about how to operate this camera. Pay attention that this camera is not waterproof so in order to use it underwater you will have to buy a separate case. The Runcom 3 camera is in the same factor like the GoPro Hero Session cameras. That's why they had some issues with GoPro and Runcom stopped selling this camera in the US. Unlike the GoPro Session 5, the Runcom 3 is capable of shooting videos only at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And for my, in my opinion, it's enough and you have to take into consideration that it, this camera cost $100, which is third of the price of the GoPro Session 5. So comparing it directly is a little bit unfair. The weight of the Runcom 3 is almost 66 grams and the Session 5 weighs about 72 grams. So the Runcom 3 is a bit lighter, but they are identical in their foam factor. So every accessory with the design to be used with the GoPro Session will work also with the Runcom 3. The Runcom 3 is equipped with two microphones. One is at the top and the second one is here on the bottom. On the right side we have the micro USB port. On top we have the power button that enables us to power on and off the camera and also to take videos or pictures. On the left side we have the micro SD card. In the first generation they had some problems with the SD falling into the camera without any option to retrieve it unless you just un just open up the camera but at this final release product they don't have this problem anymore but still I, I think that you should be careful when inserting the SD card so make sure when you slide the SD card it goes to the right place the maximum supported SD card is 64 gigabytes after powering on the camera you have an indication about the battery status if the green light is blinking 10 times, it means that the battery status is less than 50%. If, it's if it blinks 5 times, it means it's more than 50%. And if it will blink continuously, it means that the battery level is beneath 15%. Right now, the, the blue indicator is blinking because there is no micro SD inside. After inserting the SD card, you can see the LED indicator became solid blue. Changing modes is done by pressing this mode slash Wi-Fi button. When the LED indicator is green, it means right now it's on photo mode. Then OSD mode, which means you can configure the OSD. And blue means now it's on video mode and taking pictures or video is done by simply pressing the power button. After pressing it, right now it's taking video, you can see the LED indicator is flashing. Pressing it again will stop the recording. When we are on picture mode and we press it, we will hear a sound and it will flash once to indicate that a picture has been taken. In order to configure the camera, you will have to download the Runcam app and then connect it to Wi-Fi. So let's see how it's done. In order to, to enter Wi-Fi mode, you will have to short press this button. Now this blue indica LED indicator is blinking. The default SSID is Runcam 3 and then random string and the Wi-Fi password is 120. Then we can just search for the Wi-Fi. We can see we have the Runcom 3 Wi-Fi network. Then just enter 120, then hit connect. Now it's connected and we can open up the app and see that everything is working. Okay, now you need to select your device. We're dealing with the Runcom 3. Connect your camera. And we just need to ignore the, the notification that there is no internet. 
and we sound we heard a beep that now the camera is connected you can see that there is a little bit of delay but we're not using it for fpv so it's okay we can see here an indication of the battery status so now it's almost it's half full over here you have all the settings of the camera you can change the wi-fi name and you can see the status of the micro sd card you can see that the wide dynamic range is automatically on and from pictures and video samples that I've seen you should leave it on because it improves the video dramatically in order to change the quality settings just hit this button then you can choose between full ADP on 60 frames per second and you can also change the rate and you can change the resolution it can be 720p on 60 frames per second and uh, 1080p has only two options either 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second I'm going to test the camera on 1080p on 60 frames per second and leave it on the highest bitrate. When you're in photo option, you don't have any option to change the photo quality. So you can just press this button and a photo will be taken. And you can also see the picture when pressing this button. You can also download it to your phone and you can also do the same when pressing the album. You can see all the videos and photos that have been taken by the camera. Just press it, you can either preview it and you can also download them directly to your phone as well. Now I only use this camera for about seven, eight minutes on testing it and the back of the camera became really, really hot. That's why you shouldn't use this camera for a long period of time. And it also even states in the user manual that this camera should never be used as a dash cam because of the heat problem. You don't want to damage the battery. That's why always use the auto shutdown. So after 10 minutes of idle time, the camera should always shut down. Although I do have a 3D printer, I decided to buy this TPU 3D printed accessory because my 3D printer is not capable in printing TPU. And because this is a flexible material, it's not, it will double act as a mount. And it also give you your camera a protection. You can see that it fits pretty well inside but I will have to put it on the quadcopter and test it to see how it works I hope it won't be too shaky now when I first bought this I thought this is a screen protector but it's not a screen protector this is actually replaceable glass which means if this cover will get scratched you can easily replace it by just frying it out using a screwdriver or something sharp you can take it off then use this included double sided sticker you can put it on and then you can replace the glass. I paid for this around $10. So it's also good to put it on the side. So if something breaks, you can easily replace it by yourself. So I think these two accessories are two of the basic accessories you should get. And if you plan on diving with this camera, you should also get the waterproof case. In order to compare the Runcom 3 to the Hero Session 5, I've just 3D printed this mount, which actually enables me to also use it for 3D footage. That's why I have three slots. Unfortunately, it's not as good as I wanted, but I'm going to use some acetone to smooth it up and maybe it's going to make it a little bit more flexible as well. So unfortunately, it didn't turn out as I expected. I had some breakdowns and I just had to secure it with zip ties, but I think it will do for now. So in the middle, we have the GoPro Session 5 and on the sides, we have the Runcam. Three. So I'm going to use it in order to produce a 3D video using these two Runcam 3 cameras and to compare the Runcam session in the middle between one of the other ones. So in the rest of the video, I'm going to put a side-by-side -side video that compares the Runcam 3 to the GoPro Hero Session 5. I will configure the Hero Session 5 to be on 1080p 60 frames per second as well, so you can judge for yourself and see how good it is. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the rest of it and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.